Uh, I want you to all turn with me to the book of Luke. I'll be sharing a uh, passage of scripture from Luke 21, beginning with verse 25. And I'll be reading from the New uh, New King James Version. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, with the, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up. And lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man." Father, we just are so grateful, Lord, for your more sure word of prophecy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the grace and the forgiveness and your mercy that was demonstrated at Calvary, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this time and opportunity that we can open and study your prophetic word, Lord. May you bless this time, Lord. May you just teach us and lead us and guide us by your Holy Spirit, Lord, and give us wisdom in how to walk in these last days. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the title of my message today is, How Close Are We? Where are we on God's prophetic time clock? What's ahead? Um, I am not going to set a date or predict a time when Jesus is going to come back. But I'm going to show you things that could possibly transpire within the next few months or next few years. But uh, there have been people who have set dates and were made, made to look very foolish. But because more than 500 prophecies of the Lord's second coming are being fulfilled right in this time period that we live in, it stands to reason that the odds of his return or the probability of his return is very near. Now, I've always believed that the Lord would wait right up until the last minute to rapture his church, to take his bride out from this world to be with him just before the tribulation starts. And the reason I always believe that is because of uh, three scriptures and one thought. The first scripture comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, where it says that the, the Lord did, uh, did, um, is, is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. And from 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says that God desires that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And from uh, Luke chapter 17, Jesus says, as in the days of Noah were, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, God waited right up until the last minute before he took uh, Noah and his family on that ark, and he brought judgment with the flood. Same thing happened during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot. So God will wait right up until the last minute. Now, because we have the benefit of 2020 hindsight, we can see, see that God has waited 2,000 years up until today, and he has not raptured the church. And we can see the signs of the seven years of tribulation that are just upon us. So God has waited right up until the last minute. Now, 
The rapture is imminent, and it can happen at any time. There is no prophecy, as J.D. always reminds us, there is no prophecy that has to be fulfilled before the rapture of the church. But because we see all of these signs taking place today and the signs that will occur in the tribulation period, the odds of his return, as I spoke about June 6, is so much higher today than it was in the period uh, back in the 1700s or the 1500s. There was nothing happening during that time. But the odds increase exponentially because we can see the signs of his return. Now, I believe uh, that 1948 was the beginning of God's prophetic time clock. It started with the nation of Israel. It started with the formation of Europe regathered, a revived Roman Empire, the start of the uh, the European common market, which is now con concerned, uh, renamed the European Union. Now, there was also the United Nations that was uh, formed right after the World War II, and its goal is to become a one-world government to bring peace in all the world. Now, Jesus said that this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. What is the lifespan of a generation? When did it start? Did it start on May 14, 1948, as many uh, prophecy teachers believe? Or did it start in, um, in 1967 when Jerusalem was recaptured? Now, we don't want to set a date and we don't know what the generation span is. Is it 40 years? Is it 70 years? Or is it 100 years? In the book of Genesis, it speaks of a 100-year generation. But I don't believe that we are a 100-year generation. Because the time of Genesis, remember that people lived a whole lot longer. Now, as I mentioned, the scenario has been become a lot clearer. And, and prophecies are being fulfilled. And the prophetic puzzle has been coming together. And it's ironic that more and more scoffers has co have come. And they have been coming in a time when we live in the information age. So it's, it's ironic that all of the prophecies, the 500 prophecies of his second coming are being fulfilled in a time when we have no excuse of not knowing the signs of the times. I have this book, um, it's called Global Financial Apocalypse Prophesied. It's one of uh, three or four books that I've just been reading the past few days. But uh, as I was mentioning in June 6, that why is it that we have the prophetic scripture and we see the prophetic signs being fulfilled in a day of the information age, but yet most believers do not recognize this? Wilfred Hahn wrote in his book, We are to be watching, looking to his coming, recognizing the season and being prepared in season and out of season, 2 Timothy 4.2. After all, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven, Acts 1. Yet the sad reality is that only a small portion of those who call themselves Christians believe that the Lord Jesus Christ will soon return, or that the very last of the last day's events, namely the tribulation period, is fast approaching. The paradox of this situation is this. Christians, the very people who possess the Bible and its prophecies, represent many of the scoffers who would protest, saying, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our father's date died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. Now, I shared with that with you on uh, June 6th, and the following Thursday night, I um, talked about 